Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Shu from Performance Spine and Sports Medicine of Newtown. I'd like to talk to you about, I'll just do it again. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Shu from Performance Spine and Sports Medicine of Newtown. Today I'd like to talk to you about ACL injury prevention and focusing on the female athlete. So what is the ACL? Uh, many people have heard of ACL injuries. They are a very devastating injury to have, uh, oftentimes career threatening or at least you know, could, could be career ending um, for some athletes. Um, the ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. It is one of the stronger uh, supporting ligaments in the knee that provides stability and prevent twisting motions in the knee. The ACL is located, this is the outside of your knee, this is the inside of your knee. From the outside here, you can see the fibula. This is the tibia. This is the thigh bone called the femur. Your kneecap is right here. The ACL runs from the outside towards the inside, and it provides stability from torque twisting motions of the knee. Oftentimes, when you think of an ACL injury, you might think of uh, a football injury where somebody gets tackled. The force comes from the outside. It hits the knee from outside in, the knee were to buckle this way, thereby tearing that ACL. What we're actually focusing on today in today's talk is not contact ACL injuries, because if you think about it, if you contact anybody's joint with enough force, you will break part of that joint or a ligament or some supporting structure in that joint. What is more concerning to doctors and clinicians and parents these days uh, is that why are athletes having non-contact ACL injuries. In other words, nobody's hitting them from the side, and yet during certain maneuvers, whether it's planting their feet, jumping and landing, the ACLs are tearing all by itself. So that is a concern that we're gonna talk about today. Again, the ACL prevents forward movement of the tibia, and it prevents rotation. All right, um, you, can, you can click. So on, on statistics, on average, a conservative estimate for how much it costs for an ACL injury, it comes out to conservatively at least about $17,000 per ACL injury. That would include the rehabilitation, the, you know, the, which is the physical therapy that occurs, and then the surgery that occurs uh, to repair the ACL. Also, Another statistic is that there is an increase now of tenfold in the participation over the last 10 years of high school athletes. So what that's going to eventually cause is more athletes in, this, in the school systems playing sports and therefore you're going to see more and more injuries because more people are playing sports these days. The estimated cost is approximately three billion dollars, US dollars, annually in the United States for ACL injuries. There are a number of risks that are associated with ACL injury. The first one I'll draw your attention to is the focus of this talk. Females have a four to six time higher rate of ACL injury than males, and we'll talk about that uh, later in our discussion. Other risk factors that have been shown would be fatigue, hormonal changes, joint laxity that's increased. In other words, a joint that's not as stiff, slightly looser, has more give in it, that's another risk. Uh, history of prior ACL injury, that makes sense. And these here we'll talk about in greater detail later. Neuromuscular and biomechanical differences uh, between men and women. Decreased force, the ability to absorb force, let's say landing softer um, from a jump, the decreased ability to do that, and decreased balance and coordination are also known to be risks for ACL injury. So the impact of ACL injury is quite severe. Obviously, when you first get injured, if your ACL is torn, you'll have disability. You'll be on crutches. You'll be out of sports. You'll be uh, in, unable to uh, really do activities of daily living you know, too easily. Uh, there's a potential loss of scholarships for our athletes that are planning on going to college to play sports. And uh, there is an issue which so far has not been, a been able to be um, completely resolved. And that is this. When you have an ACL injury, you have 
you have the best surgery, the best rehab, the best uh, pretty much everything you can do. And yet, it turns out that studies have shown that the future rates of osteoarthritis, let's say 10 years out, at even 20 years out, are, are still there. The, the, the rates of osteoarthritis, meaning arthritis in your knee joint after having an ACL tear, no matter what you do to it, whether you repair it, whether you rehab it, you're still going to have osteoarthritis. And that's, and that's, a, that's a big deal. That hasn't been, uh, been cured. So whether you get the ACL repair or you just leave it alone, either way you're going to end up with arthritis in your knee. Now imagine you're 15 years old and you have an ACL tear. Well, 10 years from now you'll be 25. And to be 25 and have osteoarthritis in your knee is not something that most 25-year-olds wish they had. So, so prevention is really going to be the key to treating um, ACLs rather than getting the injury and then trying to figure out what to do. In, in talking about male and female differences, something happens at puberty. Basically, prior to puberty, the risk in pediatric patients of ACL injury is equal between boys and girls. After the onset of puberty, the risk of ACL rupture increases in females, <clears throat> and we'll talk about some of the reasons why. There are biomechanical changes. So we're not talking about <clears throat> necessarily anatomical changes only. So when you think of anatomical changes, you think of somebody growing taller, somebody growing um, wider. That's more anatomic, but we're talking about biomechanical. So things that happen when we move, things that happen to our, um, to our stability. For example, there's an, in, in female athletes, there's an increased uh, use of their ligaments. In other words, when, when a force is needed to decelerate suddenly, rather than rely on muscles, the ligaments are relied on a little bit more. And this has been shown in studies uh, done on uh, female athletes compared to male athletes. Another thing is leg dominance. There's a greater asymmetry as far as which leg is stronger in females than male counterparts. Also, as far as dominance of different muscle groups, there's even a greater reliance on the quadriceps in female athletes than there is um, in male athletes, which rely both on quadriceps and hamstring activation more. So that's been another risk factor that's been shown. Trunk dominance, meaning leaning of the trunk over the affected side. Usually when an injury happens, the trunk might be out of balance, another risk factor. Increased knee valgus, what does that mean? That's when the knee is in a position where it has a slightly greater angulation and increased laxity or movement of the joint is also known to cause ACL or predispose to ACL tears. So here is an example, just a cartoon example of what increased lateral trunk motion might do to the forces at the knee. Imagine that this person is standing pretty much straight down with the force straight down his leg. If this same person then takes his trunk then and leans over to this side, now the force is going to be awkward at the knee and, and, and predispose this knee to buckle. And this is a risk factor. When athletes are playing sports, if their trunk is out of control, they have an increased risk of ACL injury. Here's a picture by um, Kwamen and Associates and published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine. This is showing us that when, when, a, when an athlete lands, there is, a, um, there is an increased force of landing or impact when they land for patients that have ACL tears or uh, eventually can have ACL tears as opposed to those who have been shown not to have a as high chance of an ACL tear. So this increased landing force is, is basically um, a risk because rather than the muscles decelerating, what's happening is that the ligaments are absorbing a lot of that force and uh, that obviously would increase your risk of having a tear. Here's another picture just showing what we talked about before where the knee valgus angle is the angle that goes this way, outside to in, inside to out. 
that is a valgus angle. And athletes that have an increased angle, valgus angle, when they're measured, have an increased risk of ACL tear. Here is an example where you can see the knee buckling inward on three different athletes. This is <coughs> published by Meyer in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in 2011. And in his picture, he shows the angle of the knee. You can see how they buckle inward. In fact, it seems that the one side buckles even more than the other side as this, as this athlete is landing from a, jump, from a jump box. As they're landing, as that knee buckles inward, those athletes that have a higher angle have a higher risk of ACL injury. So here's a summary slide of a few of the things we've talked about so far and a few that we, we have not. So the, the hips in, um, in women when they, when they uh, land and, and put stress on their knee tend to be a little bit more internally rotated. The knee tends to be less flexed and it has that valgus again, that angle. There's also rotation of the tibia, which is the bone down here, your shin bone. And then oftentimes the foot is landed either on its hind foot or flat footed or slightly unbalanced. And that also contributes to a risk of injury. So to go back, why is prevention so important? We know now that once you have an injury, life pretty much changes. You have a lot of risks in the future, including osteoarthritis, regarding, regardless of whether or not you repair it or don't repair it. You're going to have osteoarthritis. Next one. The risk of repeat ACL injury is high. So again, it changes your um, ability to maybe be as explosive because in the back of your mind, if you've had an injury before, you might be worried that it might happen again. And unfortunately, the statistics show that it can happen again and it does happen again more frequently. There is, there is a, um, a good time if you're a parent or you're an athlete, if you um, or work with young children, the best time to train somebody is not after their growth spurt, but actually right before or during their growth spurt. This is the most important time to prevent injury because much of our neuromuscular adaptations that happen as puberty set, uh, sets on is the time where muscles are adapting quickest, are, um, and it's the time to teach new mechanics, new dynamic exercises, So if you think about it, some people think, all right, well, I go to the gym, I work out, <clears throat> why, do I need to, why do I need to prevent, uh, why do I need to do more, why do I need to work with a trainer, what was the purpose of that? The main reason is because if your knee is very stable, passively, in kind of fixed uh, and um, uh, controlled environments, like the gym, like a knee extension machine. That only means that your knee is stable passively. It doesn't really tell us whether your knee is stable dynamically, meaning on jumping, landing, and cutting, and pivoting maneuvers. And those are some things that, um, that in our office we would test for and we'll recommend screening for and then adaptations to try to adjust and prevent future injury. Things like power, strength, and coordination are all involved in dynamic stability as opposed to just strength and missing out on one of the components, for example, coordination. Um, these, are, these are things that I would like to focus on. Here's a picture from Hewitt, North American Journal of Sports. And this is an example of an exercise that can be done to improve um, your form during cutting and landing. This is a single hop, single leg hop, using four quadrants, and it, it tests for both agility, stability. When an athlete jumps, you can pay attention to a couple of things. How, what is their trunk doing when they land? What does their knee look like? Is it buckling inward? 
What does their ankle look like? Is it controlled on landing? Are they activating their hamstrings at the same time as their quadriceps and not relying too much just on their quadriceps? And, and then as you, as you do this type of uh, exercise, you can actually increase the speed and your agility uh, and safety to do this. Another good exercise would be um, working out the hamstrings so that, especially for female athletes that focus on or rely too much on their quadriceps, if we focus on hamstring exercises, we can help, especially during the growth spurt, to help um, reduce the risk of ACL injury. This is an exercise, um, a variation of uh, Russian hamstring curls, where the hamstrings are being utilized in, a, in an eccentric position, where the, where the person starts neutral, then they gradually let their hamstrings elongate. With the assistance, they can come back up. Another good exercise to do would be um, to increase your balance, increase your proprioception. Proprioception means um, your joints and your body knowing where the rest of it is in space at any given time. One great exercise would be standing on a BOSU ball like this, doing single leg squats on an unstable surface, uh, or to make it harder, catching a medicine ball while doing the same thing. Again, increasing your body's ability to adapt to changing environments. This is a slide from Greg Meyer at Al, and they, what they do, what they're doing here is they're doing a test where they're showing somebody doing a jump and then a tuck, where they tuck their, where they tuck their uh, heels in, and what this is showing is how well they can do this, how safe they can do this, and if you watch them from the side, but you also watch the athlete from the front, you can see um, what their pattern is, how much knee valgus they have, how much trunk control they have how much asymmetry they have in, in one leg or the other. And this is a good assessment tool for testing your uh, young athletes. So in conclusion, I have a few take home points to remember. The prevention of ACL injury is paramount. The best time to do any prevention is actually not when you're ready in college, but it's way before that. If you can train in childhood, in early adolescence, that would be the ideal time as the neuromuscular changes are happening. And my, my focus here is that with, if you work just with weights, if you work just in a gym environment, you're not giving your body the correct stresses and impetus it needs to, to adapt to injury prevention. Uh, my recommendation is to work with an athletic trainer, physiotherapist, and these are the best ways we can go about tackling uh, potentially devastating injury and preventing that from happening in the first place. Thank you very much and good luck this season to all you athletes.